today's video, I'm going to show you the Varjo VR3, which was released early in 2021. I'm really excited about it because virtual reality is going to be changing. In Varjo, it's already ahead of light years versus the competition. I say that because when I wear the Varjo versus you know other devices today, it really gives me a sensation of reality. It gave me that human sensation that I was looking at something and let's say that you go to the doctor and you see a 2020 vision of the letters and everything just looks so crisp versus looking at something where you have something more pixelated. So Varjo, it's really at the point where things just look so real that sometimes you forget that it's virtual reality. Why do they do that? Well, they're training, they're using their tools to basically train people in, let's say the Boeing company was a use case that I was looking at. They're basically training some people in the Boeing company on how to use the instrumentation of the airplanes. Well, if you're training somebody, you wanna make sure that that is closer to real life as possible, because if you are putting people in, a, in an airplane, you wanna make sure that those people are safe, right? The pilot knows the instruments well, they can read the labels well, they can read, and basically do that training as closest as real life as possible. So how do they do that? Well, they use a technology that they built, which is called the bionic display. It's really interesting on how it works because it's basically two different images combined into one, but you can really tell that there's two images. One of them is the basically the outer side, which I call the peripheral view. And that one is about 2880 by 2720. It has a 30 PPD LCD. And then that is the outer part. On the inner part, it's lower resolution, but it's higher density on the PPD, which is about 70 or a little bit more. And then also you use a technology called the ULED, which you're really familiar with if you're you know, looking at some of the TVs available today. The other thing that I also found interesting is the type of material that they use for the lenses. Normally on devices such as the Oculus Quest, such as the HP Revert, you're gonna see a Fresnel type material, which is a, a cheaper, I would say it's, it's like plastic and it's a little bit like glass and the uh, spherical type material is more like a glass. So I think their lenses are more resembled to the spherical type material versus the Fresnel material. And it actually makes it look a lot better because when you're looking through a Fresnel lens, you're gonna see that the image gets a little bit distorted except on the, on the center part of the actual lens. So that helps with the quality of the image. Another thing that they also provide, it's an automatic IPD. So on the Oculus Quest device, you can see that you, you have to adjust it with your hand. If you look at the IPD and you wanna make sure that you're aligning, you know, aligning your eyes so that the experience looks better and is more comfortable to you. But they're using eye tracking technology to basically adjust that automatically. So it has built-in eye tracking. It also has built-in hand tracking technology, which is help, which is basically developed by Ultraleap, but then incorporated into this device. So this device is, is basically heavy. It's about, I would say about 800, a little bit more. I think it's 536 or more on the actual device itself. The actual head strap is about 350. So combined, it's a little bit more than 850, which can be heavy but they claim that the, the head strap is really, really adjustable because it has a, a three-point system. You can adjust it here, you can adjust it on the back, and you can also adjust it on the side. And I actually try it and it works really well. It doesn't make you feel like you have a really heavy device. It also has a cooling system that it helps with that. The field of view is also another aspect of this device that really beats the competition. So the field of view, just, just to put it in perspective, if you're looking at the Oculus Quest 2, that is about 95 on the field of view on the horizontal axis, where the this device right here is 115. I know that there are other devices that are 120. They're just, they just were released by Vive not too long ago, but they don't create the level of detail on the image that this provides. You also have a headphone jack, a 3.55 millimeter headphone jack that you can also you know, connect to. So, what I'm gonna do now is enough talking about the specs. I wanna show you the device and basically go through it. I'm also gonna wear it and we're gonna see what we can actually do with this device today. Let's go ahead and get this open. So we're gonna go ahead and get the box open. And the first thing that we're gonna see is the actual device. You can see that everything is just so high quality. And it's gonna get the stickers out. Let's make sure that you can hear that noise. Let's get those out. 
and then kind of show you what it's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it out and then show you that device as soon as I show you the other additional accessories. So let's go ahead and put that one right over here. It has a pretty long cable as well, which is the USB-C uh, connectors. And then right inside the box, you're gonna see that we have two different compartments. I believe these two are basically the same. So if we get this one out, okay. And this one is one of the power, one of the power supplies. And then on this side, we have this pretty thick manual. And I imagine it's pretty thick because this is a pretty high-end device. And you get the manual here, you kind of see the thickness of it. And we won't go through that right now. Let's put it right here on the side. And then if we get this open, let's see. And I can see that this one is a USB-C connector uh, right here. And then, so this one will plug into the device. And then this one will plug into your computer. You also have USB and then a HDMI connector. And there's two of this. Basically both of the entries on the device will plug into, into this one. You can see that we have basically this right here, which we can adjust for the head. And then we also have one on the back here as well that is completely adjustable. So if I were to make it smaller, you can see how that adjusts the size of the head. It also has these rests. Uh, it's a little bit, it's really cozy on there. And then also here, it's like a foam that will basically protect you. They also have one dial on this side right here which it's going to, it basically changes the angle. And we'll actually try that when I wear the device. And then also the cooling system, which is right here. And then you have, you know, your power button. That's probably a menu button. And then they also included a 3.5 millimeter connection for your, for the headphones. And if you look at the lenses, these don't look that the normal professional lenses. These are more of a glassy type look. These are what they call they actually don't call it, but I've seen it. They're called the aspherical type lenses. And they look more like glass versus like if I were to, you know, bring in the Oculus Quest, you're gonna see that in the Oculus Quest, there's kind of like a couple of rings in it that made up a professional lens. Where this one, it's more of a, of a glassy, it actually looks, looks really cool. So I think what they do, they, they aim to do is because you don't get the, the rings around, the image doesn't get distorted. Well, with this one, you can kind of see the image with high quality all the way through. And I can also see the eye tracking, also this nose padding here, which looks really, really comfortable. And then again, there's no IPD, manual IPD. This is all adjusted automatically by the eye tracking technology. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get and basically put it on. As you guys can see, it just snaps. I can adjust it here. And I'm actually gonna do that because it feels it feels a little bit loose. And I'm also gonna basically adjust it on the right side, also adjust it on the left side, and then also on the back. So see, let me just adjust it a little bit here, a little bit more. And I'm not gonna lie, this device feels a little bit heavy, but the balance that it keeps with the head strap is just perfectly uniform i can move it around i can look down look up and it just feels it feels really really comfortable and i adjust this left side a little bit more and the eye tracking it's working it actually align the ipd automatically for me and the clarity is just spectacular so i'm going to show you i'm downloading steam VR right now to show you uh, experience. So let me go ahead and take it out. I can actually do that here and then put it right here. So let's go ahead and check it out and see how it looks by actually running an experience in Steam VR. Fortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you a demo of using the Varjo VR3. I am really, really sad that I can't do that. The reason for that is because I'm going to need a couple of more accessories I need to get the Steam VR base stations that it's going to allow the Varjo to basically start tracking. I also gonna need to get some compatible controllers that Vive provides. So there's gonna be a lot of things that I need to get before I can show you a full experience. And also I think my graphic card, which is the Titan, might not be 100% compatible. So I need to do a little bit more research. So make sure you stay tuned for video two. So I hope you enjoy at least looking at the device and then doing the open box. So, 
If you guys have any questions, let me know and make sure that you stay tuned because I'm going to be releasing video two very soon. Thank you guys.